On Monday, October 7, 1991, the Harold Washington Library Center, the central library for the Chicago Public Library, opened its doors to the public and a new chapter in the institution's history was underway. The product of an ambitious international design-build competition, the building itself continues to fulfill the needs of Chicago's diverse population and attracts thousands of visitors from all over the world. This video will focus on the creation of the library building rather than its functions. As an example of 20th century American architecture, the Harold Washington Library Center continues to attract a wide array of interested people, from architects and librarians to Chicago's constant flow of tourists and everyday citizens. The building is adorned with decoration and sculpture, both inside and out, and under a crown of glass interprets some of the ornamentation, iconography, and allegorical figures that embellish the magnificent Harold Washington Library Center. When Daniel Burnham and Edward Bennett drew up their plan of Chicago in 1909, Congress Parkway, now Ida B. Wells Drive, was intended to be the main east-west thoroughfare for Chicago where civic activity would be centralized. Cognizant of this, Thomas Beebe, the design architect of Hammond, Beebe, and Babka, designed the elevation along Ida B. Wells Drive as a tribute to Burnham's vision. Beebe used a combination of architectural and representational iconography along with exaggerated roof ornamentation to identify the building as both civic and distinctively Chicago in its style. The architectural iconography starts at the very base of the building. The large, rough-hewn blocks of red granite echo Chicago's historic buildings, such as the Rookery, the Auditorium, and the Fine Arts Building. This carved stone band, or guilloche, is used to mark the different stone textures from the large, rough-hewn granite blocks at the bottom of the building. Above the guilloche is smooth, slightly canted, polished granite that rises to the second floor. The similarity to the rookery in particular continues with Beebe's use of a wall constructed primarily of steel and glass. This curtain wall stretches across the library's west elevation along Plymouth Court. The glass facade reflects its historic neighbors, the Manhattan Building and the Old Colony Building. The curtain wall is also an homage to the nearby federal building complex that was designed by the great architect Mies van der Rohe, whose extensive use of steel and glass has defined modern architecture. Beebe also employed various forms of representational iconography using cast stone designed by the sculptor Raymond Caskey. Forty-four medallions were used on the outside of the library, with one design at the second floor level and another around the seventh floor. At the seventh floor seen here, Chicago's cold north wind is personified by the Windy City Man. Dropping down from each of the 20 Windy City Men are vertical columns of corn stalks that lead to the second floor medallions. This ornament features Ceres, the ancient Greek goddess of grain. Below Ceres is Chicago's motto, Herb in Horto, or City in a Garden, inspired by the seal of Chicago, Caskey's designs, clearly speak to Chicago's location in the Midwest and to the importance of agriculture in Chicago's economy, both historically and in the present time. Perhaps the most striking ornamentation adorning the Harold Washington Library Center is the acroteria, or the sculpted pieces of metal on the roof. Visible from a distance, these carefully chosen sculptures help to define the mission of the building. At the apex of the roof, along the Van Buren and the Ida B. Wells Drive sides of the building, 40 feet tall seed pods pop open with a flourish of new growth and leaves that spread 75 feet towards the corners. Sculptor Kent Bloomer commented that in ancient Greece, a burst of foliage above a temple form was often used to express a renewal of life after death, and foliated palmettes often embellished the roofs of monuments in which venerable beings were enshrined. This is, of course, fitting iconography for the library's venerable inventory of past and present authors. The seed pods metamorphose into barn owls, the ultimate symbol of wisdom. The designers are telling us that within the building is the opportunity to read, learn, and discover. 
Each barn owl is shown in an aggressive stance with humped wings. One talon clutches loose papers while the other is raised, ready to protect the freedoms within the building. Designed by Raymond Kasky, each finished owl is 12 feet tall and weighs more than two tons. Guarding the main entrance is a great horned owl taking flight with an open book in its talons. Together with the seed pods, they represent life and wisdom and symbolize a person's growth both mentally and physically. The creative process began with Kasky modeling the owl in clay at about one twelfth of its final size. Once the design was agreed upon, a quarter size scaled model was made and the clay owls were cast in plaster or an epoxy. A fiberglass resin was then made and the owls traveled to Vienna where they were enlarged to full size. The full size models were then sent to Germany where they were sand cast in half inch thick aluminum. The final great horned owl has a wingspan of 20 feet stands 20 feet tall and weighs three and a half tons. The owls were painted an undercoat of red with an overcoat of green to simulate aged copper. Once the final designs for Kasky's owls and bloomers foliage had been determined, the two elements of the acroteria were assembled for a final fitting in Madison, Connecticut. Together, the sculptures on the roof weigh 100 tons, are supported by 80,000 pounds of structural steel and cost $3 million. Additional features of the Acrotaria include an entire roof line of shields. These symbolically protect those within the building in the same way gargoyles were used to protect buildings from evil spirits in medieval times. The cornice railing at the ninth floor level marks the desired uniform height of buildings proposed by Burnham and Bennett in their plan of Chicago. This railing also marks the change in materials used on the exterior of the building from red brick to glass and steel. Under a crown of glass on the ninth floor, the library's winter garden provides the traditional plaza normally associated with large municipal buildings. The concept of a plaza was an integral part of the city's 1988 urban design program, which articulated the needs and anticipated uses of the new library. In order to adhere to the urban design program's conditions that the public space be attractive, usable, and easily maintained, the plaza was elevated to the ninth floor, making it usable year-round. Flooded with natural light, the winter garden rests beneath the cruciform-shaped glass roof, which is supported by four exposed steel barrel vaults. During the construction phase, the winter garden began as a literal garden of winter with a blanket of snow. Three months later, the barrel vaults made of steel were erected to support the glass roof of the Winter Garden. Despite its modern glass dome, the Winter Garden also has features that tie in with the library's overall classic design. These include a mix of details such as columns, window brackets, wall motifs, and door frames. The interior details are also meant to complement the features found on the exterior of the building, the cast iron iconography, and the roof ornamentation. Additionally, the Greek scrolls of the window brackets, the grand door frames, the Egyptian lotus leaves found on the capitals of the columns, and the terrazzo floor all reflect classical elements found in other civic and historical buildings in Chicago. The result is an exhilarating space with a grand entrance through four massive portals where black olive trees, climbing vines, and natural light provide a relaxed environment for reading a book or the ideal location for a dramatic gala, an awards dinner, or a public program. Much of the artwork found throughout the Harold Washington Library Center was selected through a process established by the City's Percent for Art Ordinance, enacted in 1978. The ordinance stipulated that 1.33% of the construction or renovation costs of municipal buildings be set aside for the purchase or commission of permanently installed artwork. The ordinance was implemented by the Public Art Committee who set the budgets, reviewed the artwork, and ensured that Chicago area artists comprised one half of the program's commissions or purchases. The Public Art Committee worked in conjunction with the Department of Cultural Affairs and Special Events, the city agency responsible for maintaining the public art program. 
to assist the Public Art Committee in making selections for any municipal building project, a project advisory panel was also assembled. Given the high public profile of the new library, an additional advisory committee was created to assist. This panel included representatives from the Mexican Fine Arts Center, Urban Gateways, the Art Institute of Chicago, First National Bank of Chicago, Randolph Street Gallery, and Lawyers for the Creative Arts, plus Ray Yoshida, a Chicago artist. The project advisory panel was charged with ensuring that the ethnic, racial, and gender diversity of the Chicago area was faithfully represented and with recommending a suitable memorial to Mayor Harold Washington. The Harold Washington Library Center construction project resulted in over $1 million dedicated to the purchase or commission of artwork. 55 artists, including 39 from Chicago, were selected, and their artwork is dispersed throughout the building. Of the artworks approved by the Public Art Committee, three memorials to Mayor Harold Washington were commissioned and built into the building itself. The first is located at the intersection of the library's primary and secondary entrances of State Street and Ida B. Wells Drive, and viewable through the circular oculus, a classical design feature used to provide a sense of openness. In the library's lower level beneath the oculus lies the floor installation, Du Sable's Journey. This work was created specifically to be seen from three levels. Paralleling the representational iconography used on the building's exterior, the artwork's central symbol is water, also a pivotal element to the development of the city of Chicago. This brass and terrazzo work is the result of a collaboration of Houston Conwell, Joseph DePace, and Estella Conwell Mahoso. It is executed as a cakewalk cosmogram, or an artistic impression created by Conwell to symbolize the civil rights struggle as seen from an African-American perspective. Du Sable's journey commemorates the historical legacy of Chicago as embodied in Harold Washington, Chicago's first African-American mayor, and Jean-Baptiste Pont du Sable, who, Chicago's first settler, who was black. The work traces Du Sable's route from his native Haiti in the Atlantic Ocean through the North American waterways that lead to the Great Lakes. The symbols of Du Sable's journey are encircled by a ring of quotations taken from Harold Washington's first and second inaugural speeches as mayor. Another work dedicated to Mayor Harold Washington is located in the north niche of the main lobby. Entitled Events in the Life of Harold Washington, this 15-foot wide mosaic by Jacob Lawrence depicts Harold Washington's life as a student, a civilian conservation corps worker, a soldier, a lawyer, U.S. Congressman, and Mayor of the City of Chicago. These periods of his life are shown as the pages of a book spread across his desk and collectively form a metaphoric mountain that culminates in Harold Washington's election in 1983 as the first black mayor of Chicago. For the third dedicated work, six prominent Chicago muralists were selected to produce a mural honoring Harold Washington's dedication to Chicago's neighborhoods. Entitled Comunidad C, It Takes a Vision, the work integrated some of the primary themes associated with the mural movement, urban renewal, neighborhood power, and ethnic diversity. Located in the corridor at the south end of the Winter Garden, this important collaboration brings indoors a transitory art form that is frequently lost due to exposure to outdoor elements. Furthermore, it brings to a downtown location an art form customarily found only in neighborhood settings. The selected artists span three generations of mural artists, all of whose work can be found throughout Chicago. We hope you have enjoyed this short virtual tour and that this glimpse of the architectural beauty of the Harold Washington Library Center will inspire you to visit us soon to see more.